these movies with you now well if they're better than this one i'm up for it otherwise i don't know i think the ones that are better are relative to who is watching them for all intents and purposes i think you're going to just get the same movie made in a different year with different people (laughs) With very thin plots. Okay. But I've heard that the second one and the, uh, depending on who you ask, the one with Matthew McConaughey is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You don't sound convinced. said, yeah. I mean... (laughs) Unhinged Matthew McConaughey, sign me Can up. you imagine if you put Matthew McConaughey and Nick Cage in, in a movie together? Oh, my gosh. All right, now I'm picturing... <laughs> now I'm picturing a, a movie full of meme actors. Oh. <laughs> all playing themselves. I mean, what we, we're getting the one with Nick Cage, mm-hmm. but let's do one with Nick Cage, Jeff Goldblum, and Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> with a cameo from Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know what the plot of that movie I, would be. No. On it could just be them trapped in a house over a weekend and doing you know what it Jim might as well Carey. just No, cuz he he plays characters. So he rarely plays himself. Like, I'm thinking about well, actors Matthew that... Matthew McConaughey, you think he plays himself? No, but I feel like he has been memefied mm-hmm. in... Not in the same way that Jeff Goldblum and Nick Cage have. Gotcha. Okay. But, I mean, maybe just like a reality TV show. <laughs> is, is that what I'm pitching? I think, uh, yeah, I could get on board with the reality TV show. <sighs> All right, I guess... We gotta stop our fun conversation. We no. gotta start this at some point. All right. Welcome to Bad Movie Date Night, the podcast in which we take a serious look at bad films and genre films and hopefully give them the credit they deserve. I am Nigel from a journey into film.com, and with me is my wonderful wife, Caitlin. Hello, hello. And this week, we're doing kind of a special episode. A very special episode. Well, not in that regard. <laughs> this is probably the first time that we've had our finger on the pulse. <laughs> and we are doing a movie not as quickly as we could have with it coming out. But, I mean, it came out on Friday. Look, we're doing the best we can, everyone. Yeah, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> I tweeted that there was gonna be it was going to be late. And, you know, here we are. We are talking about... The 2022, that's right, came out this year on Friday. I already said that. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, directed by David Blue Garcia, written by Chris Thomas Devlin, Fede Alvarez, Roto Sayegas, with characters uh, created by Kim Henkel and Toby Hooper. Starring Sarah Yarkin, Elsie Fisher, Mark Burnham, Jacob Lattimore, Mo Dunford, Alwyn. Oh, <laughs> I, yeah, I was on a roll with the last names <laughs> until this one. For your ERA. And, uh, what was that? Yeah, you heard me. <laughs> and uh, a bunch of other people who die too quickly to care. <laughs> this. Uh, where do we where do we start talking about this movie, Caitlin? Let's start with the premise that brings them to this town, please. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, here's some context, and then we'll give you a tweet plot for this movie. Okay. They, somebody making this movie saw Halloween 2018, said, oh, that's a, that's a good movie. We should do that with, with, we should do another horror movie. You know what would be a good, we should do Texas Chainsaw Massacre with that. <laughs> so that movie, so this movie ignores all of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, except for the first one. Mm-hmm. Brings back the main character of Sally, the only survivor of the first one, played by a different actor, because unfortunately the original died in 2014, R.I.P., Marilyn Burns. And uh, they said, it's basically the plot of Holly- Halloween 2018. That that's That's it. But that's not the tweet version. Some kids... With a food truck, I'm guessing, question mark, buy a ghost town, question mark, and they kill Leatherface's mom, question mark. Yeah. And then he kills them. That's yes. the question. That's the only thing that is not a question mark. <laughs> he kills everyone. Yes. Including Sally. There's no build up to Sally. You know what? I guarantee that people who are watching this are they the they think who's that? That's what I said. <laughs> I only knew that it was uh Sally because um cuz the internet. The internet told you. The internet <laughs> told me and I used the wikipedias cuz I said I don't remember the first one. Mhm. Oh yeah, I should probably explain why this is also a special episode. This is kind of a this is a test because we've only seen together. We've only seen the first one, the original, and I've seen the remake, which is more or less the original Mm -hmm. with more blood and guts. And I saw one of the prequels. I think the one that came right out right after the original, but I, I do not remember that one. I've only seen the original, right? That's what I just said. Oh, I okay, okay. I'm following. <laughs> I'm following now. You're following. There's a lot of Texas Chainsaw movies. I think there's nine of them. Did I count that right? One well, one could say too many. Yeah, there are there are nine of them. With most of them being prequels, so we'll talk about that in a second. The uh, where was it? Oh yeah, the other reason that this is a special episode is because we're testing something for October in which we just jump into the middle of a franchise and try to figure out what's going on. Granted, there aren't multiple entries that we need to pay attention to with this one since it's supposed to skip all the other ones. Doesn't stop me from having several questions. Several questions. Multiple questions. First question I have for you is, would you like to guess what my favorite part of the movie was? Oof. Um, the ending when it was over and the credits were rolling? Because that was my favorite part. <laughs> Speaking of the credits for a second, this is a good movie to watch with someone who needs large print. Yeah. Because the credits at the end of the movie are boom, <laughs> large print. Mm-hmm. regular tiny print mm-hmm. like they double up the credits and they're just being inclusive Nigel it was just kind of a weird choice <laughs> it was like they said we want to give credit to these people but we also want shots of Texas chainsaw stuff yeah over bright colors in contrast to the rest of the movie which is very you know bleak bleak that's a good word for it because mm-hmm. There's this trend online where people say, oh, this movie's desaturated. It looks terrible. Sure. Maybe they toned down the colors for a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're also talking about a movie that takes place in the middle of Texas where everything is the same, like, beigey, gray, orange Mm -hmm. color. Uh, No, my favorite part (laughs) was the final kill of the movie. When he, the, 
so for some reason, the directors of this movie think that, well, I, I don't know that much about Tesla autopilot. Mm-hmm. I know that it is kind of like an autopilot, but they engage the autopilot and they lean back like they're going to go to sleep. And Leatherface reaches in the car, pulls out the girl's sister, cuts her head off, and the main girl, question mm-hmm. mark, played by Elsie Fisher, is uh, the car's just driving itself away. <laughs> <laughs> She's but to out be fair, I mean, like, would you stop screaming. the car? Your sister's dead. Right. I mean, there's no point in going back. Right. So... It was just unintentionally comical, oh, I think. Oh, for sure, for sure. To have I'm not doubting that. A I... semi-automatic driving vehicle just like that's that's their homage to the end of the first yeah. one where they drive, Sally gets away. Right. right. So ridiculous. It was the pinnacle of how woke this movie was trying to be. <laughs> Not actually, not even woke. Just like hashtag relevant. I was gonna say relevant, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you know that's probably a joke that only we find funny. <laughs> because the main characters are so annoying, mm-hmm. and it's like this movie goes out of its way to say, "Look, we're aware of things on the internet, but not even coherent things, just things." <laughs> Uh, yeah. Like when they get their phone out and say, we're going to have you canceled. Right. <laughs> Which is uh something that you've seen in the trailer. They're like, you try anything, we're going to cancel you, bro. Yeah. Like, you don't even know who this guy is. <laughs> Why? What? It- also, he's murdering people. You can't cancel a murderer. Sorry. Right. Do you think he cares about what people on Twitter say about him? Maybe... <laughs> He probably doesn't even have a Twitter. I mean, that goes without saying, I feel (laughs) like. But, yeah. Just context clues, guys. (laughs) Like, I'm all for, you know, some dumb fun and some stupid characters making questionable decisions in Mm -hmm. a horror movie because that's part of the genre. But sometimes it goes too far. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which, in contrast, you were talking about how smart the first girl to die was. Not, she not was. his mom, but... I So I actually tip my hat to her because I think... Now, I know that we all say, like, oh, this is so st- she's so stupid, you know, like, why'd she do that? She The murder is clearly after her, but we know that as the audience or whatever. I think this girl, pending... Where her cell phone was. I think this girl was very smart. I think she went about everything the best that she possibly could. Did she still end up dying? Yes. But I think she handled herself pretty great. Yeah. She was. She tried to call for help using the radio. Wasn't too loud about it because she she's in a she's in a police car right. for clarification. Yeah, like that's why she tried the radio. I think. Yeah, and so she's trying trying the radio, trying to get somebody to like, you know, call for help. She's constantly checking the rearview mirrors, like always trying to keep her eye on in the him. side mirrors. Right, in the side mirrors, always trying to keep her eye on him. Yeah. Also smart. She moves very like quietly yeah the police officer basically like wakes up next to her but he's like dying and she like tells him to basically shut up she's just like shh I'm trying to. yeah um she pretends that she's dead yeah um i mean honestly i feel like she did she tried to like get out the window because her door wouldn't open yeah you do what I mean, you gotta do I've, I've just i felt like she handled it well Given her situation. (laughs) The two faults being her cell phone suddenly disappears in the middle of the crash. Like, if it flew out the window, that's believable. Right. Like, just give us one quick shot of what happened to it. Right. Two. Now, maybe this is my own stupidity, but 
I feel like you want to play dead as long as possible. I So I was kind of torn about that because I do think like, you know, you want to play dead, but I, I do wonder if watching him take the face off of the dead woman, you you could be thinking he's going to try to skin me. Yeah. Good point. Good so, point. That's a good point. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I, I don't necessarily fault her for that. Yeah. I mean, the it's one of those things where, like, obviously, if you can get out and you can get away mm-hmm. from them as fast as possible, mm-hmm. yeah, that's probably a, a, the most ideal situation. Right. But, like, if you... Like, if you don't know where he is, mm-hmm. you don't know if he's gone. Right. Like, maybe you should just kind of stay put for a little bit. So, kudos to this movie for having some... R- one really smart character and a bunch of unexplainable characters and a, a, an idiot. Lots of idiots. <laughs> like, a bus full of idiots. Yes. I'm going to say something controversial. I did not think that the bus scene was that great in terms of kills. Not at all. Are people saying that it was? Yes. A lot of people are saying the plot was stupid, the characters were stupid, but at least the gore was fun, and the bus scene was numero uno. I said this is... This is kind of a weird criticism. But it was disorienting, which you could say, yeah, that's the point. He's killing people with a chainsaw on a bus. But it was lazy disorienting. Because, one, I feel like he would have cut through people. His cha- He has a magic chainsaw. <laughs> I feel like he should have been able to kill, like, five people in one swing. Mm-hmm. But somehow this bus was extra wide or extra long or there's plenty of time to get people away like yeah. they're just it's like it moved too slowly mm-hmm. for the disorienting effect to work mm-hmm. and that was kind of my problem that I had with it I'm all for some practical effect gore mm-hmm. which I feel like as these movies have gone on it's just been more and more gore that like no one knows how to make these movies apart from Toby Hooper who like pivoted from a really serious, gritty, not bloody original about cannibals to a horror comedy about cannibals. <laughs> so we really need to watch the second one. Yeah. But I mean, I I don't think that the bus scene was great either. I feel like it he could have just like chopped through all of them with his chainsaw. I would say if there was a I say this very loosely, cool death. It would be when he like chainsawed um, Susan and like held her up by his chainsaw over top. Oh, Sally. Sally. That was, that was pretty cool. The now few, one positive thing about the movie. I thought the cinematography was mostly pretty decent. The shot of Sally dying. Pretty good. Yeah. The bus driving by while he's standing in the doorway. Cool. The one, the weird shot of him s- popping his head up in the field. I don't know why we needed that, but it was a cool shot. All the sunflowers, mm-hmm. cool. There was some kind of symbolism with the sunflowers that clearly wasn't important enough to remember. <laughs> um, you know, some of that was pretty good. I, mm-hmm. It did feel, despite being shot digitally, I'm assuming, because it was very sharp, it still kind of had like a grittiness to it. Mm-hmm but it lacked like the grittiness of the originals Mm -hmm. and the remake. And, you know, nobody does it like Rob Zombie. So, you know, it was lacking that Mm -hmm. like even, okay. And the town that they were in just kind of felt like a giant set. Yes. Yes. Very much. So like it looked like the backlot set of any movie I've ever watched that has a backlot set. That's so true. Which like there's there's nothing wrong with that, but it just didn't. No, but feel it didn't. It didn't real. Yeah, and so I do think I, I couldn't pinpoint it the way that you kind of like described it there, but 
now that you've said it that way, 100%, that's how I felt. Like, I didn't feel like I was watching a real movie. It just kind of felt like you were watching, like, a like a show put on at an amusement park, mm-hmm. like, where you can see the whole town, and then, you know, you're just kind of watching people pop out of doorways and get killed and stuff. Yes. And yeah. Yeah. So... I have some questions about the um, timeline of this. Okay. So this is the same leather face from the original. Yes. It's supposed to be. Uh, Same person, different actor. Right. He lived at the original house. I don't know what we want to call that. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Because the farmhouse that he was at in the original one is nowhere in the actual movie. There's an after credit scene that we missed oh. that shows him going back to the house. So I have questions about where he's been for 60 years. Right. But go on. So, and I know we don't get any backstory in the original, but so we're supposed to believe that this guy was raised in that orphanage by that lady left went and lived at that house for god knows how long and then came back to the orphanage yeah i don't know see that in in i'm going to say i'm going to quote something that i've heard online and i feel like it's a very accurate summary of how they this movie kind of came together but It's almost like they had a vague idea of the series Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the characters, saw Halloween 18, and then just tried to do that, but didn't put in any of the work to make it effective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I guess we're supposed to believe that Sally was some police officer for this small town, and she's just been waiting for Leatherface for a while. She was a police officer that never worked? Yeah, I didn't really get that. Like, she had a radio with the guy at the the gas station. I didn't know if that meant that she was also a police officer. I think I missed a line of dialogue in there somewhere. Hmm. Um, I, well, the guy at the store wasn't a police officer, and he had a radio. No, but that the, station, the gas station was also the police. Oh, station okay because you know it's a small town we gotta cram everything together right so i didn't know if he was like calling her in his backup i don't know if he was calling her in because he knew her revenge plan i i didn't i missed something in there so full disclosure to our listeners but okay so that we you know we don't know what she's been doing for ever I guess we're just meant to assume that she feels trauma. Because I mean, obviously it's a traumatic experience, but we're just supposed to assume that she feels trauma because she's got a picture of them and she's going to go hunt them him down. And she has like two lines in the entire movie, so it's not like yeah. we really get any context that way. And it takes her she forever to get irrelevant. to the town. Yeah, she could have just been some generic lady. Mm-hmm. Like she could have just been a third police officer that they called in for backup because she was on her day off or something. Right. Um, we don't know how what happened to the rest of Leatherface's family. Mm-hmm. We don't know why did he go to live at this orphanage? Mm-hmm. Who is this lady? I tried to look up to see if she was anyone from the original, but I couldn't find anything that said that she was. And maybe I just didn't look in the right place. And it seemed like this town was very familiar with Leatherface, though. Well, I think everybody in that general area knew him, and I think that was technically the same town as the first one. Then I don't think... What's her name? I keep wanting to call her anything that starts with an S. Sally really looks that hard for him. It's not like he was hiding. It seemed like they knew that he lived here. With that old lady. Yeah, because they were all concerned yeah. when she was dying. Like, Yeah. Yeah, it just, it didn't. And, like, they all knew, like, they knew who he was. They knew that was her, like, son. Like, Yeah. 
so. But like, was it her son? Because she was. It was an orphanage. Well, yeah, but they like they mentioned like it's her boy or something like that. Whatever. They're like, it, when he came down the stairs, they're like, oh, it's her boy, and that he was you okay. Know. So like, did he just go live with his mom after? Right. Cannibals? I mean, it might not be a, her son, but regardless, they knew that Leatherface was there. They knew who Sally was looking for. Yeah. You're telling me in this very, very, very small town of poorly populated town, she never ran into him after yeah. all these years? Yeah, I don't see that. That's the thing is like they're give us more of that uh -huh. and less of like anti-gun rights right. thing, whatever that was. Like yeah, that was also confusing. Less school shootings. I don't, that was, yeah. I think there was just a lot going on in this movie. And, I, and I'm trying to like be understanding because it's like, you know, we, we do enjoy some relatively bad movies where people would say, hey, like that's a stupid movie. Why did you guys like it? Right. But... I think one is a product of its time. Two, it's a freaking like creative idea. I feel like movies that we typically enjoy, yeah, they might not be well done, but someone had an idea and ran with it. This person just copied and pasted right. an old movie with relevant ideas. Yeah, they copied and pasted a bunch of ideas together. And it was it just, you know, it makes me mad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, like it's like another movie could have been made that was actually creative and good, but no, you just copy and paste right. this. Right. All right. Let me ask you a question for a second. Okay. Okay. So this is not. This is just one of many series, mm -hmm. franchises, whatever you want to call it, that exists in the world today, and we live in an era where it's better financially. Air quotes around better for studios to either remake, reboot, reuse in some way old IP that at one point in time was really good and enjoyable. And yeah, maybe it had a couple sequels still. And even those were still kind of, you know, interesting in their own way. Um. Like, I, I think about Back to the Future. Like, do movies need sequels? No. But does that movie, does that, do the, uh, does Back to the Future work as a trilogy? Yeah. And they did a really good job with it. Mm -hmm. But would you have been happy with just the first one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's my question for you. After all my rambling that out, would you rather have some sort of sequel? reboot whatever you want to call it i refuse to use the r word from scream <laughs> would you rather have something where it's like just they just double down on the sameness they're like they're like we're gonna force awakens this nonsense and we're basically we're gonna recycle the plot from the original or would you want something that is going to try to take the series in a brand new direction like completely take the series in a brand new direction. Yeah. Yeah. So like let's say like they because you love Back to the Future so much and because I feel like you would have strong opinions about it. Let's say that they announced that they were going to do Back to the Future. Would you rather them do something without Doc and Marty that was basically, you know, all they had was like a time traveling DeLorean? Or would you want them to like bring Doc and Marty back in some way, shape, or form? Um, I would want them to do something without Doc and Marty. Okay. Because, see, here's the thing. It it was what it was, you know. Like you, like they're doing that today with TV shows, left and right. Like, yeah, um, that's another good example. You know, they readjusted. You know, say by the bell, and like. And they did Girl Meets World and all that. And those shows are like dear to my heart. Yeah. And the originals. The originals. And they tried to remake them and I just got angry at it because it's not it's not the original. Now did I love seeing 
Corey Matthews in Girl Meets World. Yes, 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 I did. But <laughs> I probably could have lived my whole life without it and been happier because of that. Because what am I trying to say? Those shows were good in its time. And and if you're feeling nostalgic, go back and watch those. Don't don't it, try to remake it. It almost negates the how meaningful the yes, original was. That's, yes. Whenever you try to remake it yes. or continue it in some way, shape, or form yes. past its prime. Yes. It's like it's doing a disservice to such a great show. Because a lot of times those things don't even work outside of the era in which they were yes. made. Which is something that yes. we've been I've been thinking about a lot with a lot of the horror movies that we watch. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were watching uh, Frankenhooker over the weekend mm-hmm. again on The Last Drive-In. And as I'm watching it, I'm like, this movie's amazing. <laughs> There's no way that anyone would pay any money to make this movie today because it's w- it's weird on satire and like horror comedy. There's also so much nudity <laughs> and so much griminess from uh, Times Square. It just, it's just, it's such like a perfect product of its time. And, you know, like I'm, I'm mad that they're remaking Chopping Mall. Right. And they're not right. even using, oh, this is going to make me so mad. I'm going to go on a rant. They're not even using robots in this one. It's like sorcery or magic or something in, Maybe it will be a real, like, slasher in a mall. I don't know. But I don't think that you can really make a straightforward slasher these days. Right. Because everybody needs some kind of gimmick with it. Right. Want a date? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think uh, leave stuff alone. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about, like, a series l- like this or Friday the 13th or... Nightmare on Elm, like any of those those series, like do you think that? Do you think that like, at some point we should just give up on continuing it, yes. or like do you think we should just make sequels in perpetuity? No. no, we should be done. Those movies had their spotlight; it's over. And not that they're bad at all. It's just do something new, do something different, be creative. Make up your own story. Don't just keep adding. Right. It's like it's like what's happening is, you know, have, did you ever play that game in elementary school where you would write a lot, like a word or a sentence or something and you'd pass the paper around and by the end you would have like a full story? No, but I'm, I'm aware of the... Well, it's like, it's like that. And by the end, it's like it, it was gibberish. Like nobody kind of like went in the direction that you thought it was going to go into. And people would just like, especially people would be stupid on purpose and just be like, what or something. That would be me. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> and it was like, okay, well that like, is not a real story now because you just ruined it. And it was, and that's like what is happening to these movies. Like somebody had a good idea and now a whole bunch of other people are just writing one liners to keep their story going. Yeah. Makes sense. And I'm I'm over it. Yeah, I'm over it. I will Give say me something original. I I feel like any this is going to be something I say that a lot of listeners are we're going to lose our listeners for. But Halloween Kills was the first time I actually enjoyed a Halloween movie. Well, there's Halloween three. So okay, but that one's not really connected to all of them. Well, I love Halloween great. three. Yeah, it's great. But I like the original. I do. I mean, it's, I, I respect the original. I'll say good. that. But anyways. Lost me. Hmm? So do you lost me? Okay. Well, Caitlin's <laughs> not going to listen to our podcast anymore. <laughs> um, Not the direction that I thought that our conversation was go. Yeah. Was go? Was going to go? Was going? Uh, so here's a question that I have for you. Okay. This is the question that I had planned. Because I, I kind of, so something I think about a lot with, movies and i think we're too quick to say that thing in the movie was stupid instead of asking why did they do that thing in the movie okay and oftentimes the answer might be as simple as because they were told to but 
it also could, you know, if you look at the cultural, historical context of when the movie came out, you might understand why they did something the way that they did. Mm-hmm. Every character in this movie of the main four, if you want to say that they're like main four. Okay. Let's say the main three main two, (laughs) the characters, the peoples in the movie are in some kind of weird caricature amalgamation of some kind of thing like movement idea twitter Mm. hashtag um yeah like the the girl played by uh lila played by elsie fisher she uh was a survivor of a school shooting Mm -hmm. and so she was afraid of guns Mm -hmm. because of it and so like when she sees the guy the the texas guy um Richter, I guess his name was. I don't know if we ever got his. Oh, yeah, we did get his name in the movie because he's the, the handyman for the whole town. <laughs> uh, she she kind of recoils at it. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's understandable. Like, if you've never been around guns and you've been shot by one and you survived a shooting and you saw all of your friends, like, okay. right. She was probably the only person in the movie that really had any sort of like arc ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we got her. And then because of it, her sister, who doesn't even look like her, so that was a weird thing. Uh, she's very, like, anti-guns on her behalf. Mm-hmm. And they talk about how they want to leave society because they want to start their own kind of... Cult. It, basically a cult, right. but they jokingly call it a utopia where they say they're a bunch of idealists and they want to... I don't know. The, it, at a certain point, my ears just stopped listening to half of what they said, and just mm-hmm. I could have watched this movie on mute and probably enjoyed it a lot more. <laughs> but then, like, there's the guy with like the "oh, we're gonna cancel you" thing, right. and uh, you know, you got a Tesla, and the guy. It, it seems like he owned a food truck. Like I said, I don't. That was my takeaway. Unclear. Yeah, it was unclear. <laughs> Why do you think they chose? those characters for this movie instead of just giving us like generic teenagers like to to contrast something even though i didn't like fear street something i thought they did really well was having archetypes of characters that you kind of liked to some degree but they you didn't hate them was Fear Street supposed to be... Was that based in the 80s? The first one was in the 90s. Okay, the 90s, that's right. I I mean, I think that there was, there was still some kind of... Well, anyway, I, I don't want to talk about Fear Street. <laughs> I feel like somebody did market research... For the most used hashtags and then like assign them to characters in the film. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it felt to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't love that. Do you think like this was a modern attempt to create characters that you hate so that you kind of root for Leatherface to kill them? No. No. Do you think the movie was like trying to say something with it? Like society hates these people, so we're going to kill them no, off? Like some no. kind of weird catharsis? No, I I truly believe they wanted butts in a seat. So they were just trying to create relatable characters yes. in a way that I guess people relate to? Yes. Okay. I don't think they did a good job at it, but that's what I think they were thinking. Okay, so it's almost like they were too specific with their characters yeah. and in an attempt to draw people in, mm-hmm. and they just ended up creating weird... Unrelatable. Unrelatable Twitter users. Yes. Okay. That's my... I mean, I could be wrong, but... yeah. I mean, I think... 
I really don't know. I haven't come to a, a satisfying conclusion for myself on that one. Because I did think at first, maybe it's because they want the most hated people in society to die right now. But then it's like, well, then why would you want any of them to survive? Yeah, I don't, I, I haven't come up with a satisfying answer to that one. But that's been kind of the main question I've been wondering. I would, I would be curious to know what was said in the developing room. Well, this movie did have a troubling development period because the studio that had it lost the rights after the last movie came out, Leatherface, in 2017. And basically, it was just kind of up in the air. I think Legendary Pictures eventually took over. And um, by the way, they filmed this in Bulgaria, so no wonder it looks like a set. Um, the original directors were fired after a week of shooting and wow, they, they like started over with shooting stuff and then they, um, released it on Netflix cause of COVID. Just COVID still. Yeah. Cause this was supposed to come out early ish last year. Oh. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I had heard, I think I saw an article somewhere that said that test screenings for it weren't great, which is why. Oh, surprise. Yeah, which <laughs> is why they ended up just dumping it to streaming. But I I can't remember where I had read that. So that is my interesting facts about this movie. I will say that acting they they did did fine acting. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with yeah. any of the act. Actually, any of the technical stuff of this movie was fine. Yeah. The, the, the like I said, the cinematography looked really good. The actors were great. Mm -hmm. The blood and guts were great. Mm -hmm. I don't. I feel like finding the mom's skinned corpse in the cornfield was some kind of reference to the original that I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. It seemed unnecessary. It's, you know what that seemed like? One of those things that annoys me in the Halloween movies where I don't know what it is with like, <laughs> these, with these like slashers where they're like, Oh, I'm going to set up this elaborate thing to, scare people in some way shape or form i don't think that's what leatherface was doing to be fair though i think it was more of a shrine i i do think it was more of a shrine in that case mm -hmm. but while the purpose was different mm -hmm. the execution was the same <laughs> right somebody's gonna stumble upon it but and i mean be freaked out i would be freaked out if I right you would it. be freaked out <laughs> by that no right. i'm not saying that right, it's not I know, I know. it just is another in a long line of like, why did you take the time out of killing people to do this? Mm -hmm. uh, also, I just wanted to point out that the woman who played Leatherface's mom was Alice Krieg, who we have talked about before in the... Oh my gosh, I keep wanting to say Princess Bride. What is it? Christmas Prince. Christmas Prince. She is the mom from A Christmas Prince. Mm -hmm. So... Fun fact for you. Actually, she did a really good job. Barely recognized her. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the makeup was really good. Yeah, all the technical stuff of this movie was really good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you know, it was another weird thing. Hmm. They, the, how they got them into the house because of the Confederate flag that was yeah. all torn up. They were so offended by this torn up Confederate flag that had been there for God knows how long that they needed it torn down immediately. Because they had a bus full of prospective buyers coming. Right. No one's going to buy a place with a Confederate flag on it. Right. But, <laughs> counterpoint, you're in a ghost town. Right. Right. There are two people living there. Right. Who, we also, weird plot point that it all hinged on whether or not this lady had the deed to her house. Mm-hmm. 
very weird. Yes. And them being stuck there was because the guy said, you killed them. So I'm, I'm going to take your keys. I'm taking your keys. <laughs> um, Sure. You know what? Right. Whatever gets the things moving. <laughs> well, you wouldn't assume that, like, driving into a town, like, you might see some outdated things there. Clearly, they've never been to Lynchburg. Clearly, they've <laughs> never been to Lynchburg. A town literally named after the brother <laughs> of the guy who invented lynching. And then the town voted to change its name. And, and they it said, did not get enough no. votes. <laughs> so. Granted, I think the guy that the town was named after was a reverend. And I don't know if he supported lynching, <laughs> to clarify for everybody listening. But still. Nonetheless, here we are. <laughs> nonetheless, here we are. Town named after the brother of the guy who invented lynching. <laughs> oh, boy. I feel like there's one other thing that I really wanted to talk about with this, but I cannot remember. Should I even ask you if you have any dating advice to pull I from do. this movie? Okay. My question for you is, would you allow your significant other, so I guess me, to get in the car or ambulance with a complete stranger and his dying mother. Oh, absolutely not. That was another super weird <laughs> thing that they did. Yeah. They said, we feel responsible for giving this woman a heart attack. Here, girl from our group who's new to this town, <laughs> just drive off to the hospital with her. If your significant other lets you get in the car with strangers, you need to rethink that relationship. Granted, she should have been safe with the police officers. But still, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't feel comfortable separating from you in a new town. Right. Absolutely. Especially if the ambulance was also the police cruiser. Right. And that's the kind of town that you lived in. Right. And it also looked like a Chevy van that they had just painted <laughs> and added some lights to. Right. P.S. How cool was the kill... When he snapped that guy's wrist Ooh, and stabbed him in the neck with his own bone. painful. Bum. That was quite gruesome. Yeah. But definitely a highlight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's another th plot that I don't know if I mentioned this when we were talking about how this room movie doesn't really do a good job of continuing, continue, continuing whew, from the original. Why was his chainsaw in the wall? Right. Right. Who put the chainsaw in the wall? Right. Did he come back to the orphanage and she was like, you can stay here, but I got to take your chainsaw. Correct. Also, are we supposed to assume that he is some kind of supernatural entity? <laughs> because he took how many shotgun blasts? Right. And fell into a tank of water? Question mark. And... Still managed to get out and kill that girl at the end. Unclear. <laughs> I get that he is a scary man in a face in a leather face, not leather, a, a skin face mask. Right. I guess that didn't really roll off the tongue, so that's why they leather called him face leather mask. face. <laughs> skin face mask. Mm -hmm. He uh, also his chainsaw got shot by the shotgun. So that was kind of... Yeah. That should not have worked. No. I also thought it ran out of gas at one point. Yeah, I did too. Because they show it shutting off. Yeah, but i it, was surprised it didn't. And somehow he's also able to silently start the chainsaw. How nice. Is with a silent zero start? warning. <laughs> a chainsaw that's been trapped in a wall for how many years? Maybe they have silent start chainsaws. Maybe he bought one. Maybe he bought one, but we know that he pulled that out of the wall. Who knows? So, yeah. <laughs> I just have a lot of... A lot of questions. Yeah, and I, I really hate nitpicking plot points for the movie. And I could probably go on a lot longer with it. But the bottom line is I do not feel like this did a good job of continuing from the first one. 
and the main characters were annoying for a reason that we are unsure of. Agreed. However, the kills were mostly pretty good. Mm -hmm. And that is my take on Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. Hey, thanks for sharing your take. How do you think we did with guessing the rest of the series? Do you think that if we watch the rest of the series, it will fill in some of these blanks no. that we don't no. understand? No. I but mean, hey, if we're wrong, let us know. Hit us up on social media and, and let us know. Yeah, if there's somebody out there who knows the answers to the questions we're asking, please, uh, you can DM us, because that's a thing, on Twitter or Instagrams, or just comment on the post for this. Yes. And Let uh, us know. that would be great. And um, so here, let me ask you this question. This movie, pretty much the consensus right now is exactly the same thing that we came to. Um, it has a 36 Metacritic score and a five IMDb score. Mm -hmm. I forget what the Rotten Tomatoes, I think the Rotten Tomatoes is like a 30%, whatever. Uh more practically speaking, this is in like the bottom three or four for people ranking the entire franchise. Do you think that this movie deserves more credits than it's getting? Or do you think people are judging it fairly right now? I think people are judging it fairly. Okay. What do you think? I, I would agree. I I mean, we haven't really seen the rest of the series to understand. Right. But from what I understand, that it has kind of been an ongoing problem for this series to have kind of mediocre sequels or prequels mm -hmm. so I'm not looking forward to watching through the rest of the no. series but I'm excited about it No. Um, let us know on the Facebook well we're not on Facebook so Jokes that would be guys. impressive <laughs> if you did that uh, let us know on Instagram or Twitter if you enjoyed us watching a random movie in the middle of a uh, series and how we talked about it. Because I have plans to do this in October with so another let series. let us know now if you don't like it. Yeah, because maybe we got to switch things up. Do you have any final thoughts? I would say don't waste your time with this movie. But it's on Netflix. So if you want to waste your time, <laughs> go for it. That's what I say. Okay. We we would not have watched this if it wasn't on Netflix. Very true. So that is ninety nine percent of the reason that this episode is being this released. program was bought, brought to you by Netflix. Yep. So if you have Netflix and you're curious, I would say watch it. Yeah. No, I say no. <laughs> if you have to pay for it, it is not worth the price of admission. Absolutely. So we're gonna disagree on this one, but yep. that's okay. <laughs> We saw Frankenhooker, and we agree on that one. Oh, yeah. Thank you for listening. As always, we encourage you to hit the subscribe button in Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen so you never have to miss an episode. We are on Instagram and Twitter at Journey Into Film. And if you want to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash a journey into film or head over to Tee Public and check out some sweet merch. I'm sorry if I read that wrong. Caitlin was very distracting just now. Links to those are available in the show notes. And as always, never let anyone tell you that a film you enjoy is bad because they're probably wrong. Tune in next time for your pot of gold. Well, no, no, no. Next week's going to be The Love Guru. Oh, my gosh. You ruined it. And then we're, we'll do Leprechaun after that. Oh. <laughs>